and welcome to the Philly Match Show. Here we are with you on Tuesday the 6th of uh, February. I'm all over the place with the dates at the moment. Always catching me <laughs> the first week. I'm doing them wrong. This time of year I'm doing things 23. I'm thinking yeah. ahead it's 25 for the year. The months are all out the window and it is. It's chaos. But never mind. We are into a new month and a new bit of modelling. How are you doing, Matt? You all good? Um, very well, actually. Yeah, all good. Yeah, can't complain. No, and the weather's not doing bad, and I haven't got builders. That's it. Silence for the first time <laughs> since yeah. Christmas. We've got actual silence, which is really nice. And the builders are done and signed off. I'm just waiting for my rainings to arrive in about three weeks. So, the moment that's come it. Out Already for the straight off. Yes, no. It was yeah, just fall off. No, it's all done. <laughs> like a lemon. <laughs> it is. It's like lemons off of the front. Yeah, yeah. It's about a meter drop. It's fine. Uh, but no. So anyway, I've been pushing along very, very heavily. Uh, last week I built a uh, one of these, which is amazing, really, because the so same. There's not much to it. Uh, it looks far more complicated than it actually is. But what we got here is the ICM. If I go, uh, where are we? This one. There we go. This is the ICM gorgeous 132nd uh, uh, Tiger Moth. And it really is very, very nice indeed. Very nice. Went together, no problems at all. The rigging wise was really nice and I spoke about it on Friday and it is literally gonna go into a coat of primer this afternoon. We recorded this a little bit earlier, about midday. But uh, this afternoon, I'm gonna get this into primer. I'm gonna go through and get this one all painted up and ready to go. But kit wise, I have to say, it is an absolute beauty. It just goes together so, so well. And again, all those little issues I thought I was going to have because the plastic is really, really soft on these. And I obviously, I thought this was going to be a problem with the wiggling and getting it all lined up. No, it wasn't. It literally held its own. So I was thinking about we're going to need to use proper thread and stress this together to get it to hold together. But this is just the old prim knitting in elastic and uh, I intend to spray it in situ. Then I'll probably come along with a brush and I'll do the usual just doing the, the middle bits of the cables with it uh, and all the rest of it with a little bit of probably dark iron or something. But generally, though, it is an absolute joy. The question is, and it's pointed out to me, is this. So mm. the rudder has yeah. the cable coming right up to the top here, as you can see. Uh, so it's very much near where the brake is at the, as it comes along and down. But all the ones I can see, they're all lower down on the next former down. Oh. But... This one has a funny tail, and I'm wondering if it's specific to this type of tail, because the other ones have got the more rounded top. This has got that more sort of, you know, elliptical top on it, where the other ones are more curved, more egg-shaped, yeah. the other way. Yeah, yeah. But this one has definitely got the bottom end of the egg, as I call it, or the top end. So it's a lot more pointy. So I can't find one with an actual curve. So if anybody knows if they are correct, or did ICM actually get this wrong, because what it actually is, it's not me. I haven't just glued it here by haphazard and thought that'll do. There's actually a hole right the way through it. Um, and you basically put these little brackets into the holes uh, each side and mm. for these bottom ones as well. But And that's actually how it goes. But yeah, so not too sure about that, if it's in the right place or not. It's not a problem. I could just cut it, lower it down to the next one and then glue it down in position. Um, but that, uh, at the time it means I would have to fill it up here. But I'm not sure if it's one of those ones. So if anybody out there knows if this particular one, this is a, obviously the 1938 uh, version we're doing, uh, <laughs> has this particular type of uh, rudder onto it, not the more curvy rudder, if it was higher or lower or anything else, be uh, happy to know that. But yeah, no, really, really nice. Came along, absolutely fantastic. And it's a prim knitting in elastic. Now they do it in colours as well, apparently. They do it in black and different colours. Yep. Oh, well, right. I always just thought it was clear. I've had mine since yeah. like 1972. Um, so oh, I'm still go. working my way yeah. through me 8 million miles of it. But apparently they do it in colours now as well, which is a new thing. So, uh, but yes, very, very nice indeed. Cool. So going along Good. with that one. So that one's coming along very nicely. We'll get that into prime. We're going to paint this week. And then the other thing as well, I've been using these. Highly, highly recommend. If you've never used Hataka before, again, I know there's a lot being spoken currently about real colour. Uh, but again, if you uh, want to try out Hatakas, this is a great way of doing it. Basically, it's a set. You get three bottles into it, 17 mil, lacquer paint, stuff's quite thick. So you do thin it. I always thin this stuff 60, 70 percent as a minimum. Uh, and when I'm doing post work and that, I'm probably up to near 90 percent uh, thinners into it. It does give good bang for your buck. Uh, it's got great coverage, which I'll show you in a moment, but we spoke about these last week. Now they're doing these little three sets, which is a lot better than the 
big sets like this is i know it's the ak one but it's the same size boxes as they used to do as well so you used to get a big load of them but now they do it in these which makes it a lot more affordable and uh, as we'll show you in a, a little bit pm does them now i should have had it already to be honest but pm does the sets now which makes it really easy. So if you are wanting to get in and try Hataka paints and you're thinking, you know, I might give it a whirl on a different model, you can get them in these nice sets now, which just makes things a lot easier. Uh, and as you can see, they do do a nice selection of all the different ones. So we've got ones down here for the Stukas, we've got one for the 109s, the 190s, we've got for the D9s, we've got them for the old Salamanders as well. This is the set that I've got just down in here. And to be honest, at 8 99 for three of them, for three colours, isn't going to break the bank. But we've got the P47s and obviously we've got some RAF stuff down there. So we've got early World War II colour sets, obviously the D-Day markings and everything else. Uh, and you even got the Southeast Asia colours as well. So uh, some nice ones down in there. So yeah, handy little set, especially if you're not sure if you're going to like the paints and everything. You've got enough to give a go at. But honestly, they're lacquer paints. So you know how they're going to work. And they work really, really nicely. They go down beautifully and all the rest of it. And as you can see here... Uh, <clears throat> They do go on very nice, very nice and smooth. So down in here, literally, we started off with the grey, pop that in, and then we've done two passes with a lightning colour. So one brush full of white. So for this particular one, I just used a dab of uh, LP4 because it's lacquer white. Into obviously the Hataka colour, which is C. Give me glasses. Give me glasses. Which is C033. Uh, for the neutral grey and that is the first pass which gives you this sort of light colour uh, down in here then I go with another brush for and we thin it each time as well so it's just like down in here so it just gives a little bit more of a shadowing effect right the way through and then last up what we actually do is come through with a little bit of post shading so we go original colour with a dab of black and then just darken it up a little bit and then that way you get that nice sort of you know individual ones all the way through so you've got this situation on here where you've got like access ports and power lines a little bit darker we do a little bit of shading around the rivets and things down in here because there's a million rivets on this thing but as you can see original it uh, changes it quite a lot right the way through but it's gorgeous detail on this kit this is obviously the uh, hk models b25j all right so we've done that and obviously we've done the underside as well as well down in here so next up for me is going to get the top coat going onto this one. So obviously we'll be using the HK's 004, uh, C004, which is their olive drab. I'm going to do exactly the same. So it'll get the same as what the bottom's got again. So it'll just be a case of we'll actually put in quite a tight line apparently on these. It's actually a proper a line line. So we'll mask it and then we'll come in and we'll put the olive drab and then we'll lighten it twice. Then we'll darken it once. And again, that's literally just phase one of the weathering because obviously by the time we come back in then with a load of uh, oils and everything else, which is going to go with this one, it's going to make it very, very gnarly and very nice. But there we go. That's all just the first stage. So a bit of post weathering. Normally, sometimes do pre shading. This is post shading. Really straightforward. So obviously members, you'll see this this week. Oh no, my photo etch has come off. Look, just knocked it. Oh no. So, uh, Oh, save no, it. I have to put that on. Somewhere safe. All right, keep that safe. But yeah, so, uh, but no, we'll get that one done a little bit later. But yeah, come along very, very nicely. But uh, beautiful kit. Not as good, clearly, as the monogram one. But man, Obviously, yeah. not. <laughs> Obviously, Obviously not. Obviously, because nothing's as good <laughs> yeah. as that kit. Let's, let's say there's about a 50 year difference between the two. So I should hope there is a little bit of an improvement on them, <laughs> on yours, yes. rather than the one I built. But uh, yeah. It's uh, it's a B25, isn't it? What's not to like? Oh, I was going to say, no. gonna, it's time with weathering and chipping yes. and wearing tear because they, yeah, they did mm. get a bit hammered uh, to say the least. Absolutely, and this is an older one as well. From obviously yeah. with the mark, the markings we're going for this one. We actually do it in Australian markings, and the history of this aircraft is it started off obviously with the um, uh, the Americans, then it went to the Netherlands at it, then it ended up down in Australia. So it has seen pretty much the entire of World War Two. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, it's certainly been around the block a few times, but yes, but it will be chipping. And like I said on this one, this post weathering is almost irrelevant in a lot of ways because I'm going to come back. Obviously, it'll get a wash to start with. Then we'll be hammering this thing to death with oils and chipping effects and various bits and pieces for it to come through to give it a really worn down, gnarly look because I've got one there. Unfortunately, I can't find a yeah. photo of one anywhere. They're all in black and white, but they do look like they've had a bit of a hard life. So that's what we're going to go and try and recreate anyway. So, uh, but looking forward to it. It's coming along. 
I mean, my favourite stage now, it's all painting and weathering and all stuff like that. Uh, yeah. That's quite nice with doing the Tiger Moth last week. It only took a week. <coughs> probably yeah, well, that's hourly, it, hourly is probably five hours and it's done. Five, six hours and it's built. So well, That's that's the beauty of them ICM kits, how they've how they mm. designed them. They're all quick. I mean, the, I remember you said about the Gladiator. Even the 30-second yeah. ones are, like I say, there's not an iParts count, is there? So. No. The really no, well designed. You get like three it's sprues and that's it. It's yeah, great. Get them together. Yeah, you're not mm. into like ten sprues and stuff, and it's going to take you a month to to get it all together. So I can say that's a, that's a good thing with ICM in it. Really, I think they pick good subjects as well, but not overly complicated in real life. No, you know, if no. you look at their thirty second range, it's very mm -hmm. um, like I say, the biplanes are kind of simple, simpler designs from the day, rather than if mm -hmm. you go into probably even just like say Spitfire or 109 or something you're getting a bit more complex aren't you with them so yeah, yeah fair play to him but he's going to look good like I say with, with your um, Tiger Moth I've been cracking on with the obviously the figures mm -hmm. uh, nigh on done and I'm going thinking with the MG as well that's really moving along that is now ready for paint so I have sent Phil some photographs which I'm sure he'll stick in somewhere or other here we are look like by the power of Grayskull Oh, there. Well, the power of grey school, we have them. So black primed up, just to give it a solid coat of black, make sure all the shadows are done. Yes. So um, the thing in the tweezers is actually going to be a metalizer because it's the grill and the uh, radiator surround shroud, if you want to call it that. And then that's yep. the supercharger bit stuck on the cocktail stick, <laughs> the yep. taller bit. And then yep. the top bits are the headlights, but I need to paint the silver or chrome or whatever I'm going to do. Probably polished aluminium, I think. I think chrome will look a bit much. So it's probably yes. polished aluminium, and then we're going body colour. So if you flick mm -hmm. on it, then I'll give it a coat of white, because obviously this is going to be red. Um, yep. So that's just Tamiya XF2. And then, like mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to give it the coat of red probably later today um, and let that dry off. And then we can do final assembly. All the interior is done odds and sods to do but yeah we're getting there with that very nice really really nice kit and i'll tell you what just go back a minute phil sorry yeah say this kit was what did i say in the 70s where well, it's 70 say 70, yeah. 70s or whatever you know when it's actually like that it's got really good detail on it hmm. i was gonna say it looks really nice the actual louver doors yeah uh you know the actual louver grills onto it they look really really nice but for its the, age you know the strap that holds the bonnet down because obviously yeah. in them days you know you didn't have catchers you just did no. <laughs> like a just belt your belt yeah, <laughs> yeah put your belt on it belt, belt and braces keep your bonnet from flying off um yeah, but yeah honestly when it's it's really nice kit uh even underneath i know you're not going to see a lot of it but he didn't need an engine, but they put in like the gearbox and the like, you know, the the suspension and stuff, and it's really good. So really impressive. I think it's going to look nice when it's done. Like, so it's going to get a bit of weathering. Obviously, not going to overweather it because, you know, it wouldn't be that old anyway as a car from from when it is. And we want a bit of a contrast, don't we, from the rest of the scene that we're doing? Yeah. So yeah, a bit of light weathering, dust and whatever we we'll are doing, and a panel wash where it's needed. But yeah, going to try and keep it subtle with that. No, no, look like it's just been dragged out of a barn 80 years later. No, no, it's not a barn find. No, no. that's it. It's modern. No. would have been fresh from the showroom. It, it, <laughs> well, yeah, nigh on. Yeah, <laughs> not, not far off. But, yeah, nice kit. Like I said, got recommended enough of these old Airfix kits from the 70s. I wonder if they'll do a vintage classic now they've watched this. And Mate, think, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, they'll, wait. they'll go scrambling now, see if they can find scramb the that, Yeah, look at that. <laughs> what can do with it. So, yeah, really nice kit. So. Mm. And then, obviously, the figures which you were just showing... Yes. These are the three of where we are. So the two students are nearly finished. Um, mm -hmm. The one on the, which one was I doing as the video? I'm doing a video on one of them. I think it's the one on the left, I think. Yeah. Lean in. Mm -hmm. I think he's the one. I can't remember now. Is it the middle one? Either, whichever is <laughs> doing a video build. Then obviously the pilot sticking his uh, harness on or his parachute. I need to paint his harnesses and his furry collar and stuff. But he's not far off done. And then I've got the... The commander in chief, shall we say, he's the one yes. left of his pipe. He's the one I had mm -hmm. done it, but they're coming along as well. Yeah, nice figures again for styrene figures, really nice. I think they're going to set the scene off. Mm. I you know, think, yeah, yeah, that's it. The figures will bring it alive, isn't it? You could put a plane there, you could put a car there, but with the yeah. figures, it will bring it in between. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just add the human touches. I always say, and just you know, put things mm. into perspective. So we are getting there, aren't we? Then it's just us planning all the base and you know getting loads of styro uh, xps foam and carving and cutting and figuring all that out so yes look forward to that to be honest It'll be cool 
Hmm. No, composition. It will be composition, composition, that's it. Plan. And Am then I working also, on the windsock? <laughs> the, yeah, the windsock's all yours, mate. <laughs> actually, do you know what? I think that would actually be quite easy to do, thinking about it. Because yeah, all you yeah. need to do is sort of a bit of a triangular thing and roll that's it up. It. Do it with yeah. Millie foot or mm-hmm. any of the putties and shape yeah. it. I don't think that'll be that bad. Bit of doweling for the yeah for the for pole. The, for the pole. Um, mm. It'll be the fence. It'll be your picket fence. You picket can do fence. That. That's all right. I've got to see of the fence. NHS. I've got about a million tongue depressors here. I can make yeah. them out of wood and then paint them white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think we should actually do a bit of googling on 1930s airfields to get a feel for you know like yeah, we did with the typhoon and yeah. after. I reckon a few. Few searches on Google, and I reckon we'll come up with a bit of a, a gem of an idea for it. I think. Yes. But, yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to that. And also, I have been doing a little bit off camera, but I'm planning on mm-hmm. something. Let me just put my other cam on. A vignette. Mm-hmm. Very nice. So I've been using the old soup kitchen thing from Tamia that I built just before Christmas, I think. And then I've got a couple of figures. I'll show you those figures. There you go. Look, there you go. So them two there, the dragon figures. All done. Put my camera out of it. There you go. So these are some old dragon figures that I've had knocking around, and obviously I'm using these two guys here. Mm-hmm. And just yeah, just sort of do a bit of a a bit of a vignette because nice. we've got the 1944 thing going on, haven't we? Yeah. Um, yep. Just put that in a bit, hold on, in it. And I'm thinking to keep it more compact and space wise. I've been I've been sort of been inspired by these little sort of bases, a bit more simplified, but showing off mm-hmm. the figures. So yeah, yeah, that's the practice piece. But as you can see behind, I've got my wall. So my wall, I did a video on, and it's just going up on the PM channel. Nothing special, but you know, it's a uh, painting and weathering on the wall. So if yeah. anybody wants to have a look at that, but it's going to be on for a bit of a a vignette scene, which I'm going to stick on there. Hang on a minute, there you go. Mm-hmm. Pull that back a bit. So the plan is now is to have it sorted here and then a slope running up and then yeah. some figures and bits and bobs. So I'm probably going to set it normally 1944, I think, to tie in. Yes. I've um, got an idea for some figures and stuff. So, yeah, that, that, uh, that's probably where I'm going to go with that. So at least then this is actually being used and just not a spare part. Hmm. But just going back to the little vignette before we move on. This head here, I've done a little video on right. of how to paint it because mm-hmm. this is a standard kit head from um, not a resin one or anything. Um, and I'm just using like the Gen 3 um, flesh paint sets. I wanted to keep it really minimum palette just to see how it turned out, really. So that should be ready soon. So keep an eye out for that as well. Very nice. Oh, good, Very isn't cool. it? Dude, it's yeah, all these good. It's all getting on. Yeah, well, that's it, isn't it? But yeah, I like, quite like these little scenes. They're nice and compact. Hmm. So. Yes. I must admit, it's nice when you work on things which come together really quickly. You know, you say sometimes you do giant projects, like mm. last year working with a Harrier and stuff like that, and you get so bogged down into it. But you sort of, your mojo wanes a little bit as you're working your way through it. But with the smaller stuff, and it's definitely as well, because it's happened with me with the um, uh, Tiger Moth, because it went together mm. so quick and so easy. <laughs> I wanted to get on with it because you you know it's going to be done soon and like you you sort of bound yeah. along as I call it. Um, yeah. And yeah. Then sometimes you look at them and you're thinking, oh, I've got to do that. To be honest, this kit's been exactly the same. This one's gone together an absolute dream as well, no problem at all with it. And again, because it's always moving along and progressing along quite nicely, it's not like suddenly bogged down and you've got to do a ton of something you don't particularly like. You know, like sanding and filling, or if you're going to go down the photo etch route or anything else like that. But by just adding, like we've done to both of these, just something simple, it just keeps it moving along really, really quickly. So a little bit of colour photo etch or, you know, a little bit of um, 3D printed resin mm. colour stuff for an instrument panel so you don't get caught up having to detail all of those. It just keeps them bouncing along. And I think it, it's a great way. I know I've had a couple of people mention to me about they've lost their mojo for it and they've really bogged down and all the rest of it. And I know some guys in the forum, they were saying about, you know, you, you just got to get something new, a little 70 second scale kit or something that you can just motor through quite quickly and not try and overthink it. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things with a hobby is people getting burnt out, losing the mojo, because they're into a kit that's killing them, you know? The thing is though, we were just like, with the ICM kit you've just built in 30 second, mm. compare that to the Zuckimori 190. Mm. 
Yeah. You, you know where you are with it. I mean, we've obviously got, at some point this year, we're doing the the um, Fondier's miniatures kits. And I know yes. for a fact that is going to be a mojo zapper because there's a lot of work to do on it. But I mm -hmm. like doing the, the the smaller projects. Are I like to say, you get them done quicker, but also they're a bit of a palate cleanser, aren't they? You're not bogged yeah. down with doing some. These are like these this little vignette or, or whatever it is. If you doing a bigger project it's nice to have something in between just to drop on and off i think because yes. you know yeah. when you just yeah. had enough of said mm -hmm. thing as long as you don't leave it too long and you never go back to it which we obviously mm. haven't got that luxury so that's good because it will have to you know once you're committed you kind of got to do it anyway but um yeah having a having a smaller project on the go i've got really got back into figure painting again i really i didn't i did a bit last year but not as much but at the minute i'm really really enjoying mm. it again doing the figures Really find my mojo with that, and actually, like I say, with the little scenes, you don't need a massive diorama, just the little vignettes and a wall yeah. behind them, or something simple, um, some sort of prop background, you know what I mean? And then a couple of figures. Like I say, I've got tons and tons of these bloody dragon figures that I've had for ages, and it's just finding the right thing to use them mm. with, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's kind of just sparked a bit in my imagination, I think, so. Hmm. It's cool. Enjoying it. Enjoying it again. It is. Always, uh, it is. Peaks and flows over a year where you're really enthusiastic and really creative, and then it just goes, you kind of get yeah. to a point where you're struggling a bit, and then it'll come back, something will just spark it off again. And, you mm. know, um, and like you said, you'll know this some projects you, you really get into quick, and other ones are slow burners, and you kind of just force yeah. your way through them until you get to a stage where you like. Yes. I think you've probably yeah. had it with the Tiger Moth and stuff. They've been quite easy projects, as in, mm. you, you've you, you know you've had little wins quick, haven't you? Rather than you've yeah. had to do yeah. a big chunk of work and then you've you've gained something like you did, say, with the Harrier. But the Harrier at the end of it, you, you you've got a massive satisfaction mm -hmm. because you've completed it, you've you've updated it, and you've done what you yeah. wanted to do. And you, but but getting there has been a bit of a slog. Do you know what I mean? And that's why I'm hoping with the with the Hampton for me. Is it, I know mm. it's going to be a slog and it's going to be hard work, but I think at the end of it, you can have a kit that not many people build, not many are seen built, and mm. I, yeah. I like the subject anyway because I like the Hampton, do you know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah. And yeah. obviously me with the Halifax as well. I've got a connection with the Halifax with the family uh, during World yeah. War Two, And again, uh, the opportunity to build a 48-scale Halifax, that's your only option. So actually, you know, total of like four. It is. Um, yeah. So in some ways, that's why I'm not worried. And I know, obviously, we did a show all about it. And the fuselage lengths are different lengths. And, you know, again, <laughs> it's is. crazy things it's like that. There There's problems. problems to it, but I know they're there. And yeah. I, again, and I've, I've had people reach out to me. I have one guy who messaged me and sent me photos of the one that he did. And it turned out lovely. And he's working on to it. But he's done... He's gone completely to town on it. He's done like the full interior yeah. and everything else and scratch built tons and tons of details for it. I tip my hat. I'm not that person because otherwise I'll be here. Like he's saying, he's worked on it for three years. Well, I don't want to be doing That's it in three thing. years. So yeah. we'll be doing it a little bit quicker. So unfortunately, I won't be scratch building a full interior for it and all the rest of it. But again, it's one of those ones where you know it's bad. I know it's got problems. And I will do it to a level where I'm happy with the end result. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be one of those which, you know, it's been completely overhauled and done because I haven't got time to do that. Yeah. Um, I wish I could, but I think you guys would be bored to death if I came along and was like each week, well, there's nothing really to show, but I've done yeah. about 20 hours I've added, on it. I've added yeah. some ribbing. Yeah, that's it. So. <laughs> it's a bit... I'm, I'm with you because I know that's got dimensional problems and all sorts of bits and bobs, which, you know, mm -hmm. but it's going to look like I'm done. I know I've seen... Um, yeah. A yeah. couple of guys correct it, you know, on the internet. Mm -hmm. They've put it and shut it, and yeah, and yeah. it's ace to be honest with you. And if anybody does the rounds on our on the UK circuit, if you go to the bomb of command sig, the, the one on there that the guy of Brit mm -hmm. Model have done, and it's it looks ace. He's done a really nice job. That's that's not what I'm doing. I'm just going to get it built as best as I can, really, and mm. and and, and, I, and try and enjoy it as much as I can as well. Okay, I think that is that definitely is the, though, that's my crap kit of the year build. Yes. It's not like then I'm going to rush in to do a Mac 2 kit or something else. It, that's mm -hmm. that's going to, yeah. like I say, it's going to test my patience, I think. Hmm. And uh, my patients I... don't need a lot of testing. <laughs> no, no. I think it's always nice, though, when you're doing a big kit like that that's a problematic kit, because I had it when I was doing the mm -hmm. Harrier. I did have something else on the go at the same time. So the bit where, yeah. you know, the, you've got filler on it and it takes time. There's no point trying to rush it. You can push it off to one side for a couple of days and let it go off then come back yeah. at it, 
hammer it down and yeah. to be honest, i did it with the harrier with that when i changed the spine because the spine was out um and you have that dip in and it, it's like no it doesn't have a dip so and we went through i did multiple layers of filler but again it was one of those ones where i had other stuff on the go so i just got it down in the morning maybe half hour sound the hell out of it get it down put the level onto it no still i've got two mil another coat of filler spatula it on and literally put it off to another couple of days come back get it out go at it and it's never really a problem i think where it'll kill you is the bit where you you've only got that one on the go maybe um and you're you're waiting for the filler and you're waiting for these things to dry and everything and they're all stuff as we know you can't rush and i'll be honest with you i rushed it on this one because i had that trouble with the seam a little seamless segue here and like confessions of a model maker but i mm -hmm. had a problem with the seam and i did think at this point stuff it it's on the bottom so who's going to notice because i did the one on the top which is fine yeah. now but underneath i thought oh yeah really can't be on so for members who watch this video build when you see it in primer before the first coat of gray goes on you might notice there's a horrible seam just down in here which is literally here and then when i came to doing the fading work and all the rest of it onto it i'm looking at it thinking i can't so i ended up sanding it all back <laughs> and then literally going through a little bit of filler and then sanded it with super i use uh, super glue as filler tiny little bit down in there and then sanded it and as you can see now it's gone it's fine now so you won't see it but at the time i was like it's on the bottom who's gonna see it? it's gonna be there by the time it's done and it's sitting like this no one will ever know but i'm looking at it thinking no it's gonna kill me that is i need to take care of that so uh but so yes i did end up having to do it <laughs> did professional pride get the better of you it did well and also things i'm looking on the camera and i can see it on the screen That's... and i'm like that's the thing, isn't it? I can't yeah. keep doing this, having my finger over it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. At some point, you can it's see it. So I was like, do you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to sand it back. And I've got all the paint here, because when I do this type of work, as you can notice all around here, I have multiple colours. And I'm very good. Matt will be proud of me for this one. Dad Matt says that I should mix in the colour cup. And I do now, so I'm very good. Out so what I've got cup, is not in the colour cup. Sorry, out of the colour cup in here. So what I literally had was I've had this going on. So when I did the colours, admittedly the black last one that I added a dab of black that was just because it was in the colour cup. But it, it was it was done this way. So you started off with the original colour, then we went into this one, and then we went to here, the lighter one of all three. So actually, probably a good one to show. You can probably be see they are lots of different colors uh into this one so you've got three colors of the gray that went on down in here but because i kept them i could go back so i sanded it all right down to plastic filled it did it rescribed re rivet it then we went straight back in again so we just go and gave it a coat of the original color then we went in with a slightly lightened one then we went on with a very lightened one right the way through and then post over it again and it was job done so it's not like i had trouble we, we didn't have the colors left over you know so it was like ah it's okay it's going to be an easy fix an easy save we can take care of that so uh that's what we did with it oh. but again it's one of those ones you're like mm, never mind so yes. never mind get it done so never mind been productive anyway, then, we, we have been very very productive this week anyway we've got to talk about this we have <laughs> only the only the french only the French. <laughs> Only the French could do that. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, to be yeah. honest, this type of aircraft doesn't interest me at all. Um, the, the sort of early uh, sort of World War ones, but just seeing it, it's just mental. When I first saw it, I thought it was like a what if, you know? Yeah. Um, but it turns out they did make one. They made one. It was a prototype. They didn't yeah. do another. Funny enough, at this point, they decided, yeah, no, it's awful. But it's that funny but, into war period, which is we're covering at the minute. It's obviously the yeah. tiger moth and the figures and everything is into war. So you end of World War One to just before, like, obviously 1939, September 39. That bit in between is mm. like, what's that? 20s, 30s design? I would have thought. I don't, you know, probably early 30s. I don't know. I'd have to do a bit of research. But it's just one of them where the French have unique taste in aircraft. That's the only I way I can noticed. put it. You know, Helen's done a load, haven't they? Of, um, hey, look, yeah, is, are they recreating <laughs> Titanic? He's at the front. <laughs> I have no idea what he's doing. Like he's, God knows. <laughs> yeah, we, he's we, actually we recreating Titanic. The... <laughs> but yeah, are those windows? The thing is, right, you just you look at that and obviously 
Yeah, well, this is what I'm going to say, right? You've got this sort of um, the thing where the pilot sits and the gunner and whatever the guy does at the back because he's a navigator or whatever, I don't know. I don't you've obviously know, got yeah. the gun in the middle, yeah? yeah? Yeah. That's all open. And then you've got this bit at the front with two headlights that I've noticed now in the bottom yeah, corner. Yeah, it's got headlights, yeah. Which, or is that one in the middle as well underneath? Is that maybe in one in the middle. Are they off of a Citroen? <laughs> I have no idea. Um <laughs> And then you've got these four, five-looking window things, which I don't know now if they're not lights. Yeah. I don't know. I can't work out because you'd have to do a bit of research on the kit, and I'm sure if people will make comments down below are more educated than me and you of yes. what it actually is. Because he wanted that, did we think it was um, designed as a it's night a night it bomber? It's a night bomber, yeah, yeah. I just don't know. I don't understand unless that's some sort of gondola or whatever they can look at. I don't know. Perhaps it takes passengers to see what they're bombing. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. I've got no clue whatsoever. But again, I don't it's, know. It's just it's... one of those aircraft that we spotted on the internet like you do. And I'm yeah. thinking, what the hell is that? That's just the weirdest it, it, thing. Hey, it needs Dick Dastardly and Muttley flying it. Yeah, absolutely. If you have one coming along here, right, with a great big crane on it with some jaws... Yes. Running behind it, I looks like literally something like the you know, wacky the races. Catch the, the pigeon, yeah, that's it. it so... <laughs> it's brilliant. I think it's ace because you're you're not interested in that, but something like that it interests me. I won't I won't <laughs> necessarily build it, but because it's so different and so unique. Yes. Just you know, um, it kind of just like interest me i suppose i don't know yeah i've never like hmm. never seen it before anyway obviously there's only one built it's not very popular is it no, um, but no. so different from a modeling perspective and you've got to think 20 years ago you wouldn't have seen that no, no and that's no, why like you know obviously now with that's micromere doing that and other companies yeah. are springing out such unique subjects which you would have got in a really limited run or in a vac form or you'd have been scratch building it yourself now that's an injection molded kit all right it is mm. a bit of a limited run one but again macrame aren't that bad they're not mm. you know some of the other let's say uh limited run kits so it's more than buildable I so, must admit, yeah. if, if just so everyone knows, the Micromere 70 seconds scale, I won't butcher its name, but it's a DB10 Night Bomber. Yeah. So, and then, yeah. And then it's French. And it's very French. <laughs> it's it's French. very French. But so. Brilliant stuff for them. Fair, fair play. Like I said, they're, mm. they're down that mini art route, aren't they? They've been really original with the releases. I think Micromere yes. are a bit of one of those companies as well. They really think outside the box when it comes to what we're going to tour and release. Um, yes, yeah, it, definitely. It's all littered with it. So, mm -hmm. but again, obviously, it's been Nuremberg, hasn't it? Uh, last yes. week, and I don't know when it ended. How long was it? Last week it was on, was it? I or think was it, it still was last on? week. Yeah, no, not it's two last weeks, week, wasn't is it? it? No, no, it's just a week they do it for, I think. Uh, so, there's so. been some some bits of modelling news, as we will call it. So, it's been releases. Obviously, Tamiya are doing a new tooled um, leopard in 35th, yeah. and a few other new set of figures and a few other bits and bobs, but they obviously don't release everything straight away. You, you're going to get that, you know, released over yeah, the different shows, different pieces, releases, they always do yeah. it. So they've, they've teased us with a few bits, a lot of RC cars. They've done that clear edition of that Mercedes, haven't they? The, um, is it the SL? The yes, gold wing door yes. one? I can't remember which one yeah. it is, but done a clear edition of that if you want to see all mm -hmm. the interior gubbins of that. Not my mm -hmm. thing at all, but some people might like that. I still don't get over that because are they actually going to do it as a brand new tooled shell for it then that doesn't have all the injector pin marks and all the rest of it or are they just going to do a clear version of which has always been the it's one of them isn't it when they've done clear you know loads of manufacturers have doubled with the clear stuff clear like fuselage of I think Trump has done mm. a, done a few in the past haven't they and Tammy has done it in the past Tammy has yeah. done it yeah they've done it before as well um and they're obviously doing it again i think somebody else has as well i probably can't remember but hmm. i don't know wasn't it's... it hk hk did the lancaster was it with the clear edition with the... to be honest with you yeah because i've got the nose front yeah. actually they did yeah. a clear nose front yeah because yeah. i've got that as a um i've kept it as a sample bit if i want to primer mm -hmm. it and use it as a demo piece because it's ideal it's not very big yeah. and like chunky actually so mm -hmm. yeah I get it. I do get the theory behind it because when you've got all that detail, it's like um, John building his A20. All mm -hmm. that beautiful all detail that in detail, the HK yeah. kit. 
Yeah. Don't see any of it. And here fix are the same, aren't they? They've, they've, they've mm. done the bombers with the full interiors and stuff. And once you put them up, you don't see them. And I never like that where they chop a panel out and then and paint no, it red. Do you admit, remember yeah, that? The red round, yeah, yeah. The red round I the edges admit. and stuff. I don't even like seeing that in a museum. I think it, it just no. destroys the, the lines and the look of the actual aircraft. Yeah. Many a time you used to see them back in the old days. Um, yeah. But the only one I like about that is the one that they did with the, uh, is it a chieftain uh, at the tank museum where they chop one in half, completely in half, yeah. isn't it? Literally, yeah. and you, they've split it like that and you walk through the middle of it and but that's a clever yeah. one. But yeah, it, I just, yeah, that's the, I'm not a fan of that where they just sort of, you I know, think, cut and yeah. do. But I then I'm not a fan of the clear ones it's... either because you can't see it enough, you know? I think it's more better, yeah, I mean, if I'm honest, to say take photos it. of it and then have a, a look. Tackham, yeah, because yeah, Tackham do the armour, wasn't it, and various bits and pieces of clear editions. Um, yeah, they did. And I've seen them and reviewed them and that. And, I, yeah, again, if you're going to do it, just have it you take the lid off and have a look inside it, like I did with mine, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Rather than having a clear edition of. Um, but Tamiya did the, uh, I think it was the, uh, they did clear editions, but I think it was the export versions only uh, for mm. definitely the Corsair in 32nd had a clear edition. And I'm pretty think, sure that they did the Mustang was a clear edition as well, wasn't it? Various MiG ones. MiG-15 so. rings a bell. Did they do a, yeah, a they MiG-15? Yeah, they did a MiG-15. Definitely did the MiG-15 was a clear edition. Yeah. Uh, and have they done the 262? Because you get yes, clear parts for the uh, yeah. engine yeah. cells, I think. Yeah, you do. So you can see the engines inside. And Very also they cool. did it for the Mosquito as well, but that was just the engine nacelles, I think. They did a clear yeah. edition with those as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It's probably it. not, not a fan, but... Not for me. I have to admit, I'm with you. you That's not, not, my, my, not my cup of tea, but I can, see, I can see the appeal of it when you've got a lot of internal detail that you're just going to paint over or cover up with, with styrene oh, yes. and never going to see it again. So, mm. yeah, like I say, it's... Uh, it's a personal thing, that, isn't it? So. Hmm. But, yeah, this um, is... Go on, sorry, mate. Carry on. Go on, no, go on. <laughs> no, 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 I was just going to say, uh, speaking of which, uh, Box Arts, uh, Eddard been at it for their F5 upcoming. That's too soon. I know. So we've got the Box Art for it now, which actually looks quite cool with the old Tiger. So this is the old Tiger 2, or Freedom Fighter, whichever one you want to call it. Mm. Um, but uh, that one's in the South Vietnamese markings, I think. Uh, with that one so that should be quite nice with that one coming along uh we've got some of the others as well so that's this nice. is the uh, i thought that one looked nice as well g2 yeah, that's cool, nice cool nice yeah. that so you've got the g2 uh we've got one which i thought was really cool especially at the moment we've obviously watching was it masters of the air yeah yeah so, um, yeah but very nice as well with the a5 uh 190 and uh what else have we got classic spitfire i think we saw one like that very much before but it's the same yeah. one, they've just reissued it with the yeah, gold, with gold the goldie, bombs, whatever you want to call it, box now. top, yeah. but, uh, and that one's a reissue as well of the uh, of the desert scheme for the for the 108. Mm -hmm. Again, classic yeah. classic box art, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's no. quite cool. But I did like that one. I thought that was quite good with the old uh, with the tiger one in there. I assume you'll get the other versions uh, coming out the same round about time. So, yeah, very, very nice thing. So, but hopefully that kit won't be too far along. So it's not, I think it's next too. month. Because um, our pre orders up, so we'll have to be shutting that soon to put our orders in. But just a thing on that, for nobody who knows, that's the AFB Club F5, which is by far the best in 148 scale, I'd say. Would which you agree? I've got here. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I love it. It's really nice. And obviously, if you do want that kit from other ones as well, um, the Academy F5 in the um, career yeah. markings. That's it as well. Yeah. That is that particular kit. It's one of those kits that floats under the radar. No one knows what it is, but it is the AFB one. And I do like the AFB one. It's a really, really nice kit. Is. So, um, but yeah. yes, so some nice bits coming along with that one. I'm just picking out the sort of interesting stuff we were talking about earlier, Matt. Uh, another weird yeah. one as well is this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Didn't see this one coming. No, a bit, yeah. Uh, they've done, did, 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 which one did, did the Z3 have before or something? There's one Z3. out, isn't there? Another, yeah. Well, it could have been yeah. a Z4. I don't know. I'm not much, that much up on the, on the cars, mm -hmm. but again, mm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where I don't know where I'll think about this or where I stand with it, if I'm honest. Yeah. As a kit, yeah. not a, not as actually a as a proper vehicle, as a kit. Mm. But again, yeah. I suppose it's like back in the nineties and the eighties and perhaps early two thousands, we used to, I'm not saying that's a mundane car by any stretch, but you used to get mm. not the 
so exotic stuff because it always used to be the Ferraris and Lamborghinis and all yeah, the yes. cars. But then, yeah. you know, you used to get that run of Tammy used to be really good at just doing a Toyota or a Honda or something yeah, normal like cars. Yeah. Just yeah. normal cars. Uh, and Italy kind of dabbled with it, I suppose, and Esky at the time, didn't they, with, with some of their mm. releases back in the 80s. And then it kind of died to death. Fujimi, I think, tackled a bit, didn't they? Japanese car, yeah. man, um, sorry, model manufacturers tend to tackle the more run of the mill cars. Mm. But I see Meng, I suppose, yeah, if you like your BMWs and your Z4s and. Whatever. Yeah, so if you like your cars and the various bits and pieces, I think yeah, it's quite a, exactly. it's a little bit different, isn't it? You can go for yes, it. definitely. And obviously we had the thing that we were what no box art for, but we've got to talk about the 135B17 from Border. Yes. Because yes. we obviously spoke about, which um, we did beginning of the year, weren't it? The H111 35th. Mm-hmm. And we, yep. had, we had our nice little thumbnail up and it seemed to be very, very popular, shall we say, very with popular, people clicking yes. on and watching. Uh, and now they a B17, aren't they, in 135th? Which, hmm. yeah, um, I mean, it's a lump anyway. Perfect. It's a lump in 32nd, it's a lump in 48th. Hmm. 35th, it's not going to be small, but again, it's um, they're sticking with it, aren't they, this 135th? Hmm. You know. I think, you know, obviously, originally when we spoke about it, it was like, is this going to just be a test? See how people go with it. And we could, yeah. at the time we sort of championed it quite a bit because it was something different, but also you could do that thing about dioramas, stuff like that. Everything fits because it's 35th scale. But yeah. it really surprised me when they said about obviously doing the bombers. Um, and that's face it. The HE-111 isn't a small bomber. It, no. It's quite big. You know, I think it's one of those, because you think, oh, it's a twin engine. It's actually a lump and half that thing. Um, so you got that one, and that looks really, really nice, and it's like fantastic. And then a B seventeen. Let's face it. Then we're thinking we're probably going to see a Lancaster come down the line, then, and maybe all the other sort of series in there. Because if you're going to do jumps as they've done from fighters to heavy bombers, you know, then you've got to be yes. thinking about this type of thing as well, then, isn't it? The medium bombers and your light bombers. You know, because it just seems a big jump to suddenly do. So right now we're going to do a heavy bomber. Yeah. I mean- just obviously like when they started off with the 109 and then they did the Stuka and the 190 that's quite obvious stuff and then we thought well you know yeah. they're obviously doing the Spitfire aren't they they're doing the Kate is it as well in 135th um, yes so, they, so they're carrying on but you think right they'll do a P51 or you know they'll do perhaps a P38 yes or a 110 if you're going twin mm-hmm. engines you know what I mean you, you stick with like a Mosquito type I, that sort of size aircraft, I would say. But no, they've just yeah. gone, right, let's go to bombers then. We've just jumped to a medium bomber, to a heavy bomber. Oh, I tell you what, they've got, got some, um, yeah, you know, <laughs> guts, shall we say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I still don't think the aircraft modellers are convinced about 135th scale aircraft. Where no. For me, being a 135th sort of scale modeller, I'm not bothered. I can, you know, it makes sense to me. Because mm-hmm. like we've always said before, all the aftermarket stuff and everything else, it just ties everything together, which we've mm-hmm. mentioned when you get to 32nd or there's a lot more 48th than you ever have been. But I think 32nd is still a bit mm-hmm. sparse, I suppose, for yes. equipment and, yeah. you know, um, even stuff to go with it. With 35th, it's just, it's just an abundance of figures, even whatever you mm-hmm. want to do. So if it's anything like, because I'm waiting for the CAD work, but if it's anything like that 111 CAD work, we're in for a mm-hmm. treat. Oh, yeah. Because that, yeah, absolutely. again, I, I, obviously we'll have to get older one and review it, but that 111, the CAD work on that, if it's anything like that, mm. when it comes into manufacture, you know, com- comes in the marketplace, blimey, that mm. is going to be something else. I, I don't, I, to be fair, I don't care if you're a bit of a scale snob with that. I mm. think you've really got to consider building it because the detail on it looks just different level yeah. to me. Yeah, absolutely. I must admit, when I saw the, the, the cab work and all the bits in there, you're like, it's just off the chart, it, you know. And I know, yeah. obviously, I think if you go for the pinnacle of what something could be, if you look at, like, Wingnut Wings stuff, and especially, mm-hmm. obviously, their mm-hmm. Lancaster, God rest their soul, yeah. but, you know, and all the rest mm-hmm. of it, if you look at the detail on that, um, it, it's just on another level to anything we'd seen. And now we're seeing it on this one as well. And I think it yeah. just goes to show. And one of my... Not criticisms, but one of my comments I made, which I did get called out for a bit before, was when I said it would be, it's nice, but it's not their kit. You know, everyone knows that as a Lancaster was the Wingnut Wings kit. And obviously a company have taken it on and they're just shipping it out. But, and as I said at the time, it would be really nice if they would do something themselves 
and throw themselves into it. And again, we know they're using a third party company which are doing it for them, but it's under their box. But obviously they're not being funny, probably funding it and putting all their weight behind it. So it's definitely more mm. their kit of being a border kit this time. So for the first time, what we're getting then, it was a common what's called, was it Yaskiki or whatever it is? The people so, are behind yeah, it. Yeah, they're but, on Facebook, weren't it? The guy yeah, on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The chain but smoker. I'm, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> find a link anyway, Phil, if you've been yeah. in this and see if you can insert a link to the to uh, to the designers and stuff. Hmm. But I just like the way they've gone down the 35th route, stuck with it. I thought, to be honest with you, like I said, they'll do a couple of releases and think, oh, this ain't quite working, and then go in a different direction. But they've obviously yes. not. They're obviously sticking with it. And there's a, I mean, obviously, we're not, I think the, the Kates do soon, isn't it? I think yes. that is yeah. pretty much imminent. Obviously, we've seen the Mark V spit. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that'll be interesting to see if that, you know, we see that. Obviously, the 111s come out at the beginning of the year, and now they B17. Mm -hmm. um actually, it could be a lot of releases if they can go out by the end of this year beginning of next year yes definitely you know i think you know as you say there's a lot coming down the line from that side of it which is really really nice i was just trying to find a picture but yeah um i can't seem to find one down in here at the moment but yeah so again it's one of those ones where i think it's just you know one of those kits got so much anticipation for it coming out i don't think mm. we're going to be disappointed either it's going to be really really nice and i think it could be say the new era then because you've got these big kits coming down the line you know full on and it's one of those ones where suddenly 35th scale makes sense at the moment people are like well, why, why it doesn't fit me line and everything else but <laughs> yeah. a little bit smaller you know than a 30 second Definitely bigger yeah, than yeah. the 48th, but you know, it's it's still one of those ones where I think people sort of get into it and it'll be one of those where it'll be like, yep, I can understand it. The big turning point will be is when somebody else does it. Suddenly somebody brings one out somebody you know, else like, well, and goes sorry, for the 35th. We're just um, thinking though, we're getting now a lot of 135 helicopters are actually starting to see, you know, obviously the Apache family's coming out in there and... Um, mm -hmm. Is it the KA fifty or something? Is somebody doing the case? Tacken was it doing a Russian helicopter gunship? And yeah, then yeah. Trumpeter's back on it again, aren't they? Trumpeter back on the thirty fifth helicopter, you know? Yes. Bandwagon, shall we say? That would mm -hmm. be the company that would take on a thirty fifth, and I'm actually surprised they haven't in an aircraft. Is Trumpeter? Yes. Out of yeah. all of them, mm -hmm. I would have thought the Trumpeter brand, Trumpeter. whichever one yeah. it comes under, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's. I'll be boss or I love kit or whatever else they've got under their sort of umbrella, mm. if you want to call it. I thought they might actually ever dabble at it. Mm. But time will tell, won't it? I think if it does take off, um, I think the others might jump on board. I think there might be a few more who do it. Yeah, no, I we'll agree. See. I think we'll see, it will be one of those ones. Is the, are you tempted with one? Yes. I'm not saying yeah. the big stuff. I'm not saying the bigger stuff, but, you know, like, say, the Spitfire Mark V or... Uh, yeah, to be honest, I'm tempted with that HE-111. That HE-111 I'd have a go at. I know I've done the big Rebel one before, but that's yeah. nothing compared to this. I think it would just be stunning, you know, all over. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you went for something a little bit different on the camo or something else like that, you know, something you could work yeah. with it. I think it would look absolutely stunning. Um, but, yeah, no, yeah. definitely tempted by them all. They all look really, really nice kits when we've been going through them, so... Yeah, I agree. Uh, the other one bit of news coming in is obviously I did the review last week of the J22 from uh, Latiki. I'm going with that. I don't know mm. even if that's pronounced correct, but <laughs> no, no. all the rest of it. Uh, but anyway, they've come up now with a TU22, which is for probably going to be next year. It's something that they're working on at the moment, uh, right. which is this Bummer. This is a Russian heavy duty thing. Uh, and again, obviously just very, very early CAD on this one, as you can see. But uh, if it's anything like their other one, it will mm. be absolutely mega. Something very nice. So it's 144 scale, so it's sensible scale. But uh, yeah, something a little bit different, but literally it's just primary CAD work done for it. Uh, but uh, hopefully it will come along and be just as nice as the other one. Uh, so yes, very, very nice. But it's nice to see a brand new model company coming along. Yeah, absolutely. I've got, got to agree with you from that. Um, again, right scale for that thing, because that's massive. <laughs> it's a big yes. aeroplane. If you do a second, then that's huge. Because I think yes. Trump did one, don't they? Uh, yeah, they do, and I've got one. Yeah. Uh, is it that one? I don't know which version I've got. Hold on, which one? Which version have I got? You've got I've Blackjack, got... haven't you? Is it the Blackjack? Sorry, got yeah, Blackjack. I've got the Swan. Yeah, sorry, it's the Blackjack that I've got, not the 22. Yeah, yeah I've got the 160. So. Yeah. 
yes but uh, very very nice so again nice to see a brand new company was very very mm. impressed from the kit that i did that j22 it's a beautiful kit so uh yes if you haven't seen it i've done the review you can go off and have a look at that one now but um they got back to me when i did the review of my message to them we had a bit of a discussion and yeah no i think it's going to be really really good so it's nice to see them hit the ground yeah. running and obviously you good, know, luck to her, mate. good luck, good to luck her. definitely good luck i think you'll be running well with that one yeah uh so yes pretty good so i'm just seeing if there's anything else in my news of uh stuff that i'm finding off the internet today <laughs> that's how we do it that's how we roll this is how we do it yes definitely so yeah i don't think there's any other news a little bit disappointed i must admit with nuremberg because obviously there's no mass announcements and releases and things like that but again the way the world is now it's not done at the trade show so much anymore yeah yeah <laughs> even so you know there's, there's a few bits coming out like i said that 160 puma the two three four two puma from um does works 116 scale to add to yeah. that there's a lot of 116 scale armor kits coming out at the minute um again you know it's um i think next month's going to be actually quite a bumper month because i think we do the b26 next month and obviously if that f5 is coming out as well I think that's due for next month from uh, Edward. So, yeah, I think yeah. I'd say it might start picking up again, I think. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Mm. Um, did we mention the uh, the swordfish on last week's show? I think we did, didn't we? Swordfish. Not swordfish, swordfish, the gannet, uh, EW3. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we've got that up on pre-order, the sword gannet. Yes, the, yeah. the good-looking the, the, version. The, the good, the best-looking gannet. Yeah. So, yeah, cool one. Very, very nice. So, uh, but yeah, the saw one, the 48 scale. Don't know if it'll be uh, on a par with, obviously, with the Airfix one, but it's the better looking version. Why Airfix didn't do that version, I don't know. Because so. I know why they didn't do it. That's a why? very limited palette, shall we say, of actually when it was used and what it was used on. There's not a lot you can do with it, <laughs> as in markings. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. But, yeah. Um, and obviously, if it's going for the bigger picture of, well, we can do a German one and a and different, you know, whoever else. So and I, can, I can see one, what I... And a German one and a South and African a... one. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, it's a gannet. It's a bit niche, yeah. whichever way you look at it. But but at least mm. we've got both versions in 48. We have now. Because yes, all we've ever had is the sword, sword 72nd version of that one. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, was it the old uh, Revell? Come yeah. trumpeter version of the the Apex version of it, I think, and then really, really old versions from Frog or whatever, which we can't really, you know, bring into this <laughs> bring into this chat. But um, yeah, hmm. who'd have thought, really, that version of the Gannet? I think that's really cool. Hmm. I tell you what, I could do with that. Hmm. To be honest with you, there's a lot of them knocking around in museums. So if hmm. you wanted to do sort of a museum, you know, worn weary one. Yeah. There'll be lots of references, so you can, you know, if you didn't want to do a pristine one, you wanted to do a bit more weathering and, and oh, it's, the, it's the sandwich wagon, I wonder what it was. Oh, right. Sorry, I can <laughs> the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the music playing, so yes. Oh. Um, be a nice release, that. I think it's due out soon as well, that Gannet. I don't think it's far away, so. No, absolutely, I don't Watch think Watch this so. space, I'm sure we'll get mm -hmm. one and fill a review it and we'll tell yes. you all about it. We can do that, uh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, speaking of things like that, uh, over on the PM store, in stock, we've got yes. the ICM's Tank Buster, the JU-88, with a massive cannon on it. And who don't like a massive cannon hanging from under an aircraft? Well, this is true. So, so yes. Yes. New release, obviously, it's a version of a, a JU-88. Well, the only other one I know of is Dragon used to do one. I think Dragon did, hmm. uh, did one of them. But, I don't know, it's got a cannon in you know absolutely and like to be honest that box art's not doing it much justice because no, to be no, honest, it shows I think, like, its best side no no i don't think so either really to be honest i think it might have been better i suppose they're trying to show the cannon but i don't think it's the best box art because technically the ju88s their ju88s are like we were saying they are really really nice um mm. straightforward you've got engine detail you've got full cockpit detail all the rest of it but it's only to a level so like we were saying, if you do wanted to go a little bit down onto it, you could do a little bit of aftermarket and all the rest of it. Clearly, you do need a mass set. Um, but uh, as for, you know, the rest of it, if you just wanted to do it sort of buttoned up and all the rest of it, they are absolutely fantastic kits. 
Um, so yes, so we got that one up at the moment yeah. at just fifty-three pounds. If you fancy yes, a nice tank busting Ju88, uh, we've got yeah. one of those down in there. Uh, over in the store uh, on so, the specials, got new oh. specials in. New specials. So these are up on Friday. Some of them have been sold, so we've added some to it. So what's been sold has been taken out, and we've added to it. So obviously got some hobby boss in there, uh, which have all got good discount. Um, got a bit of Valum up. So if you want a Hampton, a Mark One Hampton, there you go. You can build one. Bit of M yeah. um, that one's sold out. So that one's sold out. So that needs to be gone. With that one's gone, the Mark Two, um, and Is then a bit of Pioneer Apex. gone. Oh, yeah, it's Pioneer's Pioneer. gone. Yeah, oh. that's gone. It's been sold. I'm afraid. It's obviously, They're very nice civilian marked one, Australian one. Obviously, you've got the one over here as well. If you wanted to do that Pioneer, but yeah. they had another version. I was very tempted with that. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's gone. Obviously, got a, an Islander there. Uh, just mm -hmm. want to talk about thinners. We're going to talk about thinners now. We've got this on a special at the minute. We have yep. discounted it. Um, I think there's a little bit of a shortage in the UK of leveling thinner, shall we say? <laughs> so, if you can't get leveling thinner, that is a good alternative. And obviously, mm. we are selling it a bit cheaper than it should be. So, there you mm. go. Yeah, we can't seem to get leveling thinner at the moment, which is a bit weird. But honestly, as I use it, and I've had this one, as mm. you can see, uh, and that's it. So it's just exactly the same as leveling thinner. It's got a slight little bit of retarder in it, just slows down the drying. So especially if you're doing gloss work, you know, yeah. and things like that, it just makes things a little bit wetter, longer. So obviously when you're spraying at it, the particles, when they hit it, literally melt into the surface instead of sticking onto it. Something I talk about on this yeah. one as well. Um, but yes, so um, definitely, but uh, highly recommended. Use it all the time. Yeah. Uh, so, so we've got that one in there and we've got a little bit of air fix. A bit of fix left, which will be changed out if anybody wants it. And then a bit of academy as well down the bottom. So yeah, just keep an eye on it, changing all the time that. Um, yeah. Like I said, oh, there's a bit of, is that F5 <laughs> look? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. A bit of AZ as well down the bottom. Yeah. You want a chipmunk and stuff, like I said, they've all got good and sword. There you go, uh, nice sky raider, uh, bit of a lightning F3, yeah, some shriek and the, demon. Demon. the, yeah. the yeah. night fighter meteor as well. So, yeah, hmm. keep an eye on them, they're changing all the time as things sell. Stuff goes in there at the minute. So, back nice. up and running our little special page. If you want, just want to get damaged boxes quickly. Mm -hmm. There's some stuff in there, look, X review samples and a few other bits that's not been in there. So, some cars down the bottom as well. And the transit van look. Van. Yeah, me and Matt did them a couple of years ago now, but yeah. there's a build, but yeah, yeah, really good. I built the Adi Quattro as well. That's an ace build. And then obviously the Escort's different versions of that. A couple of armor mm -hmm. kits. So yeah, again, a couple of things in damaged boxes that's not been seen. The, just to let you know, if, if you're watching this, the box of the B25, which is the, um, the Edward boxing, is damaged. We ain't got a picture of it because that's quite a pristine one, but it is a, it, it's not a brilliant box, shall we say. The kit's fine, everything in this fine, we wouldn't be selling it, but the box is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. not brilliant, a, shall we say. It is a proper damaged box. Yeah, it's had a bit of an odd life. <laughs> okay, fair cool. enough, that's okay. Um, and then just the usual suspects, we're having like stuff coming in and going all the time. We've got um, a new SMS delivery coming in, so we've got some paints coming on board that we've not stopped. That should be here tomorrow. Tomorrow, attacker, like say the paint sets, attacker thinners and singles are in. Pretty good for Tamiya. Um, so, yeah, like I say, come probably tomorrow afternoon, all the SMS stuff that we've got new stuff in. REF colours, interior greens, US interior greens, stuff we've not been able to get when we first started putting the orders in of coming into stock. So, you know, ghost greens probably. All things like that. So just keep an eye out with SMS. They're coming in all the time. We're building that up. We've got an AK order coming in at the end of the week. Um, so we're going to have a restock of AK. Obviously not the real colours because they know more. But everything else should be in who we're out of. Um, and yeah, that's it really. Very nice. Just yeah. to say about the AK real colours. Um, I've had loads and loads of people asking me about what's going on with them. Is it going to be a new formula? Are they going to be like made of, I don't know, otters tears or something? Uh, the simple answer is we don't know. Uh, no one's mentioning it quite yet. So, um, but as I say, as soon as we do know, we will let everybody know. 
Um, but as far as I'm roughly aware, and don't hold me to this, this is not the official line, um, there's, as far as we do know, there's no massive change to the paint itself. Um, so don't suddenly panic that it's all going to be changed and it's all going to be eco-friendly and that, because clearly it's not. It's still going to be a lack of paint. Mm, there you go. So that's it as far as we know. But what changes are being made apparently are very, very subtle, but it's not like it's going to be completely different and it's a new formula and this, that and the other, and it's now an acrylic because it isn't. It's still going to be, but it's, uh, as I say, just a little bit of change to it. So, yeah. So, cool. but, as you say, if you do want it, grab it. Hey, we've got we've got alternatives. Yes, absolutely. Stocking like alternatives till, till we get yeah, we go attacker in there, SMS, whatever. We've got alternatives to uh, fulfil your needs. So and honestly, I can honestly say, lack of paint is one of those ones where it's not as finicky perhaps as you find with acrylics. Mm. You know, like if you put uh, third gen with Vallejo you know the difference immediately they're like night and day the way you work those paints is totally different you know uh whereas lacquer paints tend to be thin it probably more than 50 percent always uh and then you know thinning 60 70 percent but hatakas works just the same as real color absolutely and it does obviously with lp range and anybody else's lacquer paints as well so you know it's a lot more forgiving shall we say about your mix ratios and air pressures and your usage uh with lacquers because it just it's a hot product as i call it consumes itself so it's not really a problem so don't worry about it but if we haven't got it in a particular color highly recommend the attackers you've never tried them before they just give work a, give them a well because they really do work you know i've, I've got loads up there and i use them all the time so they are really good paints for that one so cool. that's good job that's right okie dokie we will leave it right there with you um i'm not with you tomorrow because unfortunately i'm off for a small procedure on my face <laughs> so yes i think you should film it vlog it i come back i look like rylan right <laughs> 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 Oh, no, dear. but I am in for a very in-depth root canal with a specialist because my normal dentist can't do it, which is always worrying when they send you over to a specialist, isn't it? So, yes. So I've got to go off and have that treated uh, and done. So I'm not sure if my face will be up to it. So if I'm on blended food <laughs> and you just see hands, you know why. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I probably won't do a vlog with you tomorrow, but I'll definitely do a vlog with you on Thursday and then obviously back with Friday. Chance I might move it around a little bit so you probably get the B25 up on Friday and then maybe another bit of B25 next Monday. Then we'll go back over obviously onto the actual uh Tiger Moth as well. So, members, you can keep up with all of that one. But no, cool. very good. Thank you very much for that, Matt. Good job today. No problem. We will see you all again very soon, everybody. Happy morning. Take care. Say goodbye, Matt. We're out of here. Bye. Bye.